Okay, hello. This is Paul Martin again. Yes, your expert on the Hamilton Beach bread maker model 29881 in this case. So I've got uh, two of them actually, and uh, this time around it looks like we've got some internal problems with the. Uh, one of them's got a belt that got totally chewed up and into dust. And I opened that one up, but I didn't uh, film it. So I'm gonna, I said, okay, I'm in a roll here, so I'm gonna do this one. And uh, I already took the screws out. And these things are a little bit uh, troublesome uh, because they're snap fit here. But since I've done this one before, I can already see where I've gouged and made some. So, and I just did it, so I have the confidence to try and see if I can just snap it open, like, uh, like so, without trying to destroy it too much. The other one just popped open, which was nice. Let's see if I can get this one to pop as well. Oh. Yeah. What was that? Ah, oh, the pizza kit. Yeah, Stuart said I got a pizza. So, uh, let's try it from over here. There we go, that's what I wanted to hear. A little popping sound there. So I think I'm on a good roll here. It should also pop, yeah. And I'm gonna do this here. Here, I can see where I gouged out some of the plastic last time I did this. And I also, did it the hard way, I remember. I can see the plant. I'm gouging again. This is but hey, you know, an old machine. Reminds me that last. There we go, there we go. So that's how, that's how that works. Brute force. So I'm going to stand it upright again. See if I can't gracefully. Let's see, there's, there's a cable here. There we go. So it's got the cable here that goes to the uh, circuit board. Because all the controls are up here. So I'll just pop this off. Like so, hopefully, easily. The other one came off easily enough. So I will pinch that and pull off at the same time. Now if you're thinking, it's going to be a miracle if this thing will work again after all this stuff pulling on the cable. You're right. All right. Man, some kind of... I guess that's... Oh. Yeah, sometimes uh, breadcrumbs get in there. So I'm just going to put this down here. And let's see what we got. So you get your, sister, your situation here, where here's your motor turning, and then there's your gear. So this thing's actually still connected. I don't know if you can see the gear in there, turning. And uh, let's see what we get. I get. Oh, I got some metal. I got some metal shavings down here. That doesn't look good. It all looks good to me. It's like it's just amazing. But you want to turn this around. And we'll do the rest of the, I got two screws here, like on the other one, I only have two as well. It's kind of funny. I saw a video, it showed that it had four of them, but this one only has, yeah, there's only two connection points here. So I'll do this, one here. I'm putting all my things here. Uh, I'm going to take this apart taking off the two externals. Put these two points here. And we're basically here, here and here. Interesting about this Z model, they say that there are different parts and different stuff in it. And I'm seeing that it does look like it has even might have different connection points here. Now in the, the next thing I'm gonna have to do is remove four screws here. And the last time I see 
I didn't get one off, I didn't drill it off. So uh, let me try, I think this should be loose then, I mean easy to get off, since I've done it before. It turns, it turns. On the first, you know, when you first, when I did on the other one, I did this. Because, you know, they were factory, factory installed, so I did this to loosen up the, uh, to loosen up the thread just a little bit. I don't think I need it on this one. Nope, because like I said, it's already been taken apart once. So, and you're gonna wanna stick with me here because you're gonna see something that you've never seen before on the modification I did here. Why did I do the modification? Because they sent me the right um, belt, drive belt, for the wrong thread maker, or they sent me the wrong belt for the right thread maker, one of the two. And so it came up way too long, and so I had to solve that problem. Because here I am in uh, Central America, Nicaragua to be specific, and we just can't uh, send it back, you know, once you get it in there. I think I brought it actually on my last one on a trip. So let's see, this should come out at some point. There it goes. And so this is also, if I wanted to, I could pull some wires, but I don't want to. I'm just going to put this over here, like so. It's a little bit more cumbersome than the other one. Okay. Next step is this is where your drive belt is. Holy, now, what the hell? Oh yeah, it's inside. I made my modification inside on the drive belt side. So I do see here, see this bolt here? That's my modification and there's a pulley on the other side. A tension, I made a tensioner on this. So this is still working. The problem is it's, it's making huge noises. So we're gonna see what's going on in there. What's going on underneath that it's making a boom, 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 boom noises? Okay. So let's put it back here. It does suck to be your own cameraman, yes. Now, I wonder if my head's getting cut off, for instance. Okay, so, uh, so I go into my good posture, probably like seeing me that way. Anyway, so now I need to take off a few screws here. I probably should have used a, a drill for the, you know, a handy drill thing. Zip, zip, zip. Take them off. But, again, not uh, as professional as I'd like to be about making videos. I think it'd be great. Wouldn't it be great to have yourself a cameraman? Yeah, that would be awesome. So you just do your thing, concentrate on what you're doing and saying, not wondering what's happening with the stupid camera. That's just a New England. I don't know, people say stupid this, stupid this and stupid that in other places too. With no intention to offend. I'm not trying to offend the camera. It's just, that's what we say about it. Stupid camera, that's giving me trouble. So, here we go. I think I got one more after this. Over here. You're gonna love it. And you're gonna be happy that you, you hung in on this video to see this. I should have maybe done it the first time when I did it, and I just didn't think of it when I was in the heat of the moment. So now this thing should lift up, and the secret is revealed. And this is very interesting because I got we've got definite uh, grindage going. And something's going on here. Let's see. Check this out. See this black matter here? That's dust. That is like corroding. Not corroding, but uh, deteriorating belt dust there. I don't know what the heck this is. Thing. I, I had to cut something off here. Yeah, that was like a center support. I cut that off to make space for this. So I took, this is a, a bearing with, and basically there's two um, washers on either side as guides. And so this is a, a bearing, you know, and it's bolted in and this runs on that. So that's pretty cool. I forget, I forgot that I had, how I had done this. But I think this is also, because this thing, this thing is just way too long. This belt came way too long. So I said, okay, what am I gonna do? And that's what I did. Now I'm, I'm ordering the correct belt and maybe I, I will be able to actually put it in just directly this time. We will see, we will see. Okay, so what else? 
Now I'm going to do the troubleshooting and see if I can figure out what's making, you know, there's obviously looseness here. You know, there's some definite looseness that's this way, you know, maybe more than, yeah, definitely more than on the other machine. This is the older machine, and that, uh, that kind of play is probably getting to where it's belt-eating play. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you today, as if I make videos every day. That's what I wanted to show you about this machine here. Let me get into, where's the thing there again? Okay, so let's try not to cut my head off now. So I wanted to show you that. And uh, then I'm gonna do the troubleshooting and see you know, if there's anything I can do to put in a shim or something for this thing. But, uh, that's how you would actually change this uh, this belt here. You'd open it up like that. You put a new belt on. I had to put a, a tensioner on, but you know that I hopefully won't happen. So you. this is the deal here, and you can see uh, the alignment is not that great. Can you see that? That's going down there. It, it, this is just not very well aligned. This whole thing. Unless, the, unless when the motor's in action, it goes up there. Maybe it does that. Maybe it pulls up. I don't know. You know? But it certainly has that capacity to move. But uh, in that case, it shouldn't be so bad as it moves up. But I do see here deterioration there. And again, look at this thing. You know, I mean, I just don't think that's optimum. Look at that. No way. No way. So we're going to give that a try. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to see if I get that thing off, and then I will get back to you. Okay, so here's the uh, the gear that I made, uh, the tensioner. So I built it in over here with this, and then it's got these guides, and then this is a, a bearing. What kind of bearing do you call it? I don't know. It's a sealed bearing of some kind, and uh, so it was rolling on that. So that's pretty good. Okay, as I we can see, this belt seems to be in pretty decent condition. Changed, you know, I don't know how long ago, but it is so much better than the original belt in the Hamilton De Beach bread maker of the, the other one that I'm changing. This is a replacement belt, so we know that, I guess we can say with fair certainty that the original equipment is of Hamilton Beach bread maker uh, model whatever it is, is shit. All right, so what have I done? I have taken this off with just uh, one little nut and a couple of washers, nothing pressed on or anything. Underneath this, you can see it's actually in pretty decent condition. It's not uh, eaten up, so that's good. It does, there is a kind of uh, semi-warped plastic little washer here. And then this is what we're interested in here. And you can see that, if you, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of worn off to one side. It's kind of going that way, which makes sense because the pressure is pulling it that way. There. So what I'm going to try to do is take this thing out. It does have a, uh, a C-clamp thing on it. Retainer, I guess is what we should call that. And uh, I'll get... I'll get back to you in a minute. Oh, what the heck, there might be some people who want to see how you take off one of these things. I sure want to see. So what I'm going to try to do, I, I kind of reinvent the wheel every time, because since I do these things every once in a while, I actually forget what I've done. At, at my age, too, I mean, I could have you know, forgotten more than I've learned. No, I don't think so. So the other thing to do is use this, just pull, ah, yeah, okay, there it is. See, see, it's like I've done it all my life. Uh, now, this hopefully will just fall out, pull right out from here. So this is your drive of your bread agitator. So maybe that will just come right out without any further ado. Yep, there it is. And so you've got this bore going metal on metal. Yeah, I can see where that could be a problem. A little bit of metal on metal action there. And... Uh, so I'm going to have to, and then here's another one of these washer-like things that is worn out. So I'm going to clean this thing up and then see about finding some kind of a sleeve. Maybe copper would even be the excellent kind of thing, something. 
and uh, maybe even try to lubricate it somehow so I can get this back in action. Okay, so here we have here we have the drive mechanism. The hole it's got to go into. You see, this is the um, looks like it's steel on steel to me, and it's been worn off to a side, and it's like not very stable. I would say, not very good. It needs to be. So what I'm going to do is see if I can get this pressed out, this part in here, and put another sleeve in there that will be tighter and make this run more, you know, regular, controlled. I mean, it goes good when there's no pressure on it. The problem is when there's pressure from the belt. So we'll see about how that works. All right then. So, nice having you with me today. I hope that you enjoyed the video.